Welcome to episode number 342 of the Beyond Social Media Show, the podcast for all of you marketing, advertising, public relations, and communications professionals. You can find us by searching for Beyond Social Media Show. We are recording live on YouTube on March 20, 2021. A lot of things to talk about this week, including Twitter spaces, spoken word IKEA, COVID vaccine playbook, American dialects, wine drinking careers, Taco Bell not found, instant holograms, Facebook newsletters, vaccine PSA, key moments in video, fireside app, LinkedIn shades, TikTok, and you want to stick around for some uh, from stats on online spending. Uh, but we kick it off with the best story of the week. And BL, you always have that honor. What was that story? Well, I think this week, Twitter's launch of Spaces, uh, which is their uh, Clubhouse clone, uh, launched on mobile, and I happen to be part of the beta. And I just before we started, I recorded a Spaces saying we were about to record live on YouTube, and then I tweeted it. I could not figure out how to invite you into it, although you're supposed to be able to invite anybody to join and speak in a space on Twitter. So um, I'm not sure what that was about, but uh, iOS uh, can do that. And Android users are uh, currently able to join and speak in a space where we're test they're, they're testing small groups. So I couldn't quite figure out how to make one, but anybody can join as a listener and only people you invite can speak. So I have to learn more about that, but I did tweet from spaces and it works. It worked great. Not, not well enough. Oh, not me, great. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't go oh. figure out how next week. <laughs> yeah, I I don't have it on my on my app. Um, that might I can be listen why. in. I have I have listened in on a couple of a uh, couple of spaces uh, conversations, but yeah, You're on I can't iPhone? create one. So, yep. Yeah, very weird. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> there's uh, no instructions so much for that. <laughs> Where's the manual? Um, <laughs> as we we used to say in tech, uh, read the effing manual. Yeah, uh, right. If there is no manual, what are you going to do? Anyway, uh, another audio story. This is one from this is from uh, Ann uh, Quito of Quartz, who reports on IKEA's catalog. So they've got a 288 page product catalog for the U.S. market, and um, they have repurposed it. They have turned it into an audio book, a four hour long audio book. So it's <laughs> Ikea's audio, audio catalog. It's narrated by Jasmine Richardson, who she reads the catalog. So she starts out with describing the covers, the cover of the of the catalog we see. And she describes what's in the picture and all the products and everything. But she also adds uh, some some jokes and uh, and some kind of stuff quippy remarks about about what's going on in the uh, in the catalog she uh, apparently she has a some broadway and television credits to her name and she was hired uh, according to this article for her ability to convey a smart but quirky and slightly offbeat fun quality um she's a black woman so that underscores the 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 uh, ikea's brand brand's commitment to uh, diversity and inclusion um there's a description of the first chapter. So the, the, the audio book is not just this four, long, four hour long audio file. It's broken up into chapters. And so the first chapter, and they're about 12, 15 minutes long each. Uh, this, our first chapter of the IKEA audio catalog will take you on a journey through the sumptuously simple space of a sweet surfer couple. While catching some tasty vibes on this tour through their one bedroom home, you also find tips on how to make smart design decisions that will help unlock the secrets, the possibilities and the simple joys of living with less. Um, so it's a, a pretty clever um, clever tactic to, uh, to jump on the audio craze, take advantage of everybody in home listening to more audio and uh, and uh, and present their product and their their catalog in a different way. I love that. It sounds a little like the Senate reading the um, COVID bill. <laughs> it is much more entertaining than that. <laughs> I'm glad. So um, speaking of COVID, um, Weber Shandwick has uh, jumped into the fray. They've issued a free downloadable playbook for corporate COVID activism, and it has best communication practices in it and a webinar series and um, it 
it unveiled its version of it and uh, put together information that describes understanding vaccine hesitancy, engaging employees, getting involved in community efforts. It has specific examples of how companies and brands are getting it done. And then they're also offering uh, private consulting. They have this thing called Plan VX. And um, they have a three-part webinar series called The Path Forward. And it's a very responsible thing for a PR firm to do. So I thought that was an impressive entry into the situation. All right, very good. Um, this, is, uh, this is fascinating. I came across a, uh, a YouTube video by Wired, uh, which uh, features an, a dialect coach. His name is Eric Singer. And uh, he basically gives you a tour of the different dialects and accents that are used across uh, English speaking America. Of, uh, he and a bunch of other linguists and language experts uh, basically take a look at some of the uh, distinct accents that we have around the country. Part one uh, goes along the East Coast and it starts like from the Pilgrims in Boston and then goes all the way down to Piney, the Piney Wood Belt of the Deep South. So that's Georgia and Florida and Mississippi and Louisiana. And then uh, the part two, they move across the continent. But this this host, uh, Eric Singer, uh, recreate he, he's 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 a uh, impersonator, I guess, is what you'd say of all the dialects. So he actually speaks the different dialects as he's talking about them and how they came about, and is really about migration patterns of different different peoples. Um, just fascinating stuff. Uh, if you're interested in language, but also if you need to. Um, market to a specific geography and you need that right sounding voice for it, this is something you'd want to pay attention to as well. Also also addresses Minnesota, oh yeah, you know, you gotta you gotta wonder um our dialects in in um <laughs> here in Minnesota. You have a Minnesota accent, which I've no, always enjoyed. Yes, you do. I enjoy it. So um if I if I was a wine drinker, I would apply for this job. This is a $10,000 a month, good job. And that's spelled G-O-O-D-E. Um, a California, uh, <laughs> this is from Inside Edition from a story by Ruth Bashinsky. Uh, a California wine company named Murphy Good, G-O-O-D-E, is uh, looking for the right candidate to join their team in the Sonoma Valley wine country. So you have to be willing to move to California and they'll pay you $10,000 a month and you'll live rent free for a year. And uh, if you're interested, you have to submit a video resume to the application page explaining why this is your dream job. And then you'll be evaluated on uh, role value, creativity and design, applicable experience and skill set and you have until June 30th to submit your video and they add that creativity and humor are pluses for applicants $10,000 a month you get to taste wine you get to work in the fields you get to you know follow the founders around and $10,000 a month and rent free <laughs> not a bad gig if you can not get it not a bad gig <laughs> no 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 um, this is, uh, I came across this uh, from an article by Nicole Martins Ferreira on Oberlo, um, which featured uh, just as a way of illustrating uh, something in the, in the blog post, uh, a 404 error page from Taco Bell. <laughs> it's just brilliant. I love the idea of using the, tech, the 404 error page to diminish the frustration that people have when they find, when they get to that page, right? It's not a good experience. You're not, you haven't found what you're looking for. Um, so to try and uh, bring a smile to people's lips when they come to that frustrating experience, I try to try to do that when we're working in a web project. This is an example of that. It has a uh, taco, <laughs> an animated taco running happily, arms waving, and then it trips and falls and spills its contents on the ground, <laughs> gathers gathers up its ingredients and puts it into his, into the taco shell, gets up, starts running again, then falls, and it repeats over and over again. Uh, the error page itself uh, says, the page you are looking for does not exist. And then in parentheses beneath that, unless you were looking for a page with an animated animation of a taco tripping and literally spilling the beans. If that's the case, it definitely exists and you definitely found it. <laughs> that's funny. Of course, you don't get where you were trying to go. So <laughs> um, this is from uh, 
a story by Ray Kurzweil of Kurzweil Technologies, and uh, he is just an absolutely amazing person. And this is about a new technology for creating holograms almost instantly. And, and uh, in the article where he describes this technology, he says it could produce a spillover of holography into fields like VR and 3D printing. And, you know, even though virtual reality headsets are popular for gaming, they haven't yet become the go-to device for watching TV or shopping or using software tools for designing and modeling. And one reason for that is that VR headsets can make people feel sick with nausea, imbalance. I'm one of the people that happens to eye strain and headaches. And this happens because VR creates an illusion of 3D viewing, but you're actually staring at a fixed distance 2D display. So the solution exists in a holography. And that's actually a 60 year old technology and it's now been updated for the digital world. So a new method called tensor holography enables the creation of holograms for virtual reality, 3D printing, medical imaging, and a lot more. And it can run on a smartphone. Um, and it's a 3D representation of the world around us. And it's also beautiful. Uh, I have an illustration of one of them for the show notes, but it's a very interesting development because I, I for me, um, the headset has always made me dizzy and nauseous. Does that happen to That's you, right Dave? Cool. Does it does that happen, not to, happen you? to me? No, it's no. not interesting. No. Doesn't happen no. to everybody, but it happens to a lot of people. Yeah, I've been uh, eagerly awaiting for years now uh, the advent of virtual reality, um, and it just hasn't seemed to come yet. I, that's that's a major problem with it, but um, but also you need to be able to see the space around you. That's why augmented reality is working much better than virtual reality. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So, um, uh, Facebook is jumping on the newsletter bandwagon. We had Substack God, <laughs> really, really started creating that boom, and there's a bunch of uh, additions. We talked about Twitter having buying review and incorporating that into uh, into its platform. Uh, but Facebook is is realizing what's going on and they're joining the party. This is from Variety's Todd Spangler reports on the plans to launch the new platform writers for, uh, for writers to self-publish and grow their audience and make money uh, through, uh, through some monetization tools. The platform will roll out in the coming months in the US on Facebook. Uh, they're promising robust styling options, uh, and you can create individual websites and email newsletters, much like you can with uh, Substack. Um, it will be integrated with Facebook pages, of course, to enable publishing across multimedia formats, so um, photos, live video, stories, etc. cetera. Um, indie writers and journalists will be able to create Facebook groups and tap into analytics and they also intend to launch features to help audiences easily discover new content and writers, quote unquote. I assume that means advertising. So <laughs> more, more uh, advertising inventory for Facebook, right? And are the writers going to be able to monetize their newsletters? Yeah. Oh. Yes, they don't say how, but yes. Yeah, well, you know, there's been some pushback against subs stack lately uh, with uh, authors saying they're actually not making money and they feel like they're not being marketed properly. Uh, so, you know, th it, this is a this is a, a, an emerging field. And I think there'll be a lot of new developments as time goes on. So this is uh, an ad an ad council. Just one second. <laughs> this is an ad council COVID vaccine campaign and uh, the ad Council and COVID Collaborative are uh, leading a massive communications effort to educate the American public in order to overcome vaccine skepticism about the COVID-19 vaccines. Um, the source of this was um, Jeff Forster in the um, Vaccine Project newsletter from Haymarket. But also there's a, a video that I'll put in the show notes of a group of California doctors who rework Hamilton to promote vaccines. And they say, I'm not throwing away my shot. And it's really worth watching. But the Ad, the ad Council work is quite uh, stellar. Very good. Necessary, so necessary. So I um I was doing some research on um, uh, the remarkable two 
tablet. If you're not familiar with the Remarkable 2 tablet, it's a tablet designed for basically note taking and designed to mimic um, what it's like to uh, use paper notes. Um, so it's got a stylus. It's got different uh, different uh, pen tips. It uh, you can do you know artists use it because it's very sensitive um, uh, for drawing. Um, but I was doing some research on this and did some Google searches, obviously, um, and came across some unique search results that I have never seen before. What it was was inline, uh, you've seen videos, video thumbnails in search results before, but this was inline videos with, um, with a, like basically a film strip of, of the videos and beneath that key moments that were time stamped with thumbnails of parts of the video that you would be interested in. So they had, this was a review of the Remarkable 2 tablet. So they had the marker tips part where they talked about the different t marker tips that you have, pen latency, um, screen texture, and all the different things that you would be interested in a review. They had sectioned off so you could go directly to that po that portion of the, the, of the YouTube video. Didn't appear to be triggered by video chapter markers that we've discussed and we do in our own um, uh, Beyond Social Media show uh, video videos where we have the timestamp in the description and you can click on that and it'll go directly to that section of the video and then shows up in the video. So it didn't, these videos did not appear to be using that, that tactic or that technique. So it looks as if the, that Google's technology, YouTube te technology can understand video content itself without uh, an assist from the creator in segmenting off those different parts. So fascinating. I started to see that two weeks ago as well and could not find any information about how that was happening, but it was on a variety of, of videos and they come up at the top of search with that bar underneath that has, it, yeah. it, it says, it says something like things you'll be interested in or highlights of, or something like that. And it says, key moments has, is what yeah. they called it in mind. And yeah. it, it'll say this has seven key moments and, and then you can click into them from yeah. the Google search results. So we have to find out what's making that happen and make that right. happen. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, Clubhouse is the hottest thing since sli sliced bread, I, I guess. And Mark Cuban has now jumped into the field and he's basically reinventing talk radio. So um, there's <laughs> stories from LinkedIn, The Verge and Screen Rant from uh, also from Scott Monty and Ashley Carmen. And Scott Monty is doing his podcast, or I think he did it yesterday, on uh, the new app, which um, it's uh, and it's called um, Fireside, and it, uh, they refer to it as a next generation podcast platform that facilitates live conversation. And it's very similar to the live audio startup in Clubhouse, except that you can uh, natively record the conversation. And it launched this week. And uh, creators are able to broadcast, record, and monetize their conversations while they're using the built-in analytics tool to figure out what content that they have performs the best, which is totally missing from every other platform. So um, there was a job posting for Fireside since it's been taken down, but it says social media has failed us by creating antagonistic echo chambers and mediums for communication that only further an outrage culture and business models that incentivize spreading disinformation and that about sums it up doesn't it but uh, fireside uh, according to the post said it's looking to foster civil intelligent discourse shared connected experiences and genuine relationship building virtually through its broadcasting platform and so they claim they're going to promote driving social impact through meaningful conversations at scale so i tried uh, just to check it out yesterday, and I landed in a podcast that was happening. I was not interested in that particular topic, so I left the room. And then a couple of hours later, I got a text saying that the recording of that event that I had joined was available. So um, we were talking before the show about perhaps doing our podcast on the platform to check it out. Once. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's the huge um, differentiator. The, what the huge missing ingredient from Clubhouse is the ability to record the, the and podcast. Monetize. And monetize. You know, I mean, well, that too, and, and, and the analytics as well. I mean, those mm -hmm. are three significant 
significant features. But as a user of Clubhouse, you know, I get notifications all the time about these these conversations that are taking place. May be interesting to me, but I'm in the middle of something. I'm not going to listen in. I could, if I could, you know, yeah, I'm interested and get that recording and listen later. That be a lot better. I turned so off notifications because they were so yeah. annoying. Yeah, I expect there's going to be a. Um, I think expect Clubhouse is going to be adding recording very soon. Well, be recording cool. and also right now, if you want to make a comment uh, during uh, a conversation, uh, for example, when Felicia Horowitz does her virtual dinner parties on Saturday night, which are always fascinating, and you should listen to them. If you want to make a comment, you have to go to Twitter, do a direct message to someone she tells you to direct message to, and then he comes back and says these are the questions from the audience, which is ridiculous. So you can't uh, you can't message anybody on that platform. So that, you can't you can't raise can't raise your hand and ask to be included. Not in that one. Mm -mm. That's no. Weird. You want, well, it's on a lot of them that way. If there's a large enough audience, but you know what's going to happen soon on Clubhouse is it will be monetized when somebody has three thousand or four thousand people listening to them every week. Of course, they're going to start charging for it. So you know it's a very new area, and uh, Mark Cuban is smart to jump in there. Yeah, yeah you know, it's not going to be the last either. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I don't have any more good news. Do you? No, it's going to bad. I've got a, this is kind of, this is, oh, you'll see. Uh, so um, <laughs> this, this month is National Developmental Disabilities Month. And I was doing some, we were doing some research and, uh, and trying to find just content came across this uh, YouTube video um, that was called uh, everyone wins when everyone's included. And it is, uh, it is uh, from a nonprofit, I'm not going to say which nonprofit, but uh, it is, um, the, it, it poses the question, what does inclusion mean to you? And then that question is answered by a whole host of people uh, with and without disabilities, uh, developmental disabilities, discussing what what inclusion means to them and uh it's it's you know what you would expect from a nonprofit. it's uh it's it's heart warming and everything and 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 touching but um everybody is talking about it what inclusion means the means to them inclusion throughout the whole thing and all of the people are white they're all, i mean it's like Ah, a little glaring in its absence of people of color. Uh, it was uploaded in 2018, so it's not like, you know, it's not post uh, George Floyd, but still, it's during this the Trump so years. Old. So, yeah, yeah. Jeez. So, so uh, this week, LinkedIn took a shot at TikTok. Uh, they're running an ad campaign saying companies shouldn't advertise on platforms like TikTok, which I think is really stupid. Um, and they're saying uh, LinkedIn's telling advertisers that business marketing doesn't belong near pictures of dogs in costumes. And uh, it says, LinkedIn, don't be a fish out of water. Uh, do business where business is done. And uh, so... Um, <laughs> LinkedIn says, uh, th this is, uh, I, I saw this initially from a, a post by Toby Bloomberg, and then I read an article um, uh, by Megan Graham, and, uh, I, and I did a whole bunch of other research. And uh, anyway, LinkedIn says reaching your target audience when they're in a ready to do business mindset is particularly crucial on social media. If your business message is sandwiched in between skateboarders and your best friend's vacation photos, it'll feel out of place. Uh, and so they're saying the campaign will appear, uh, this campaign is going to appear on LinkedIn. It's going to be in publications like Ad Week and Ad Age, and it'll be on YouTube. And uh, they said that YouTube is trying to reach C suite decision makers and marketing practitioners. And from my point of view, the answer about whether brands belong on TikTok has to do with it depends. Um, you know, it would be strange to see an ad for Chipotle uh, or the San Diego Zoo, for example, on LinkedIn. But I think LinkedIn could do well with ads on TikTok. And um, well, I get why LinkedIn's doing this campaign because they want more money. Uh, they're overlooking all the brands that are getting great results on TikTok and Instagram and Snap. 
so uh, an article in um, HubSpot by Pamela Bump explains seven brands that are using TikTok successfully and how and why. And another one by Lucy Rendler Kaplan in Social Media Today offers eight brands that are incorporating TikTok into their marketing. And at the end, it's a battle that LinkedIn might lose. So we'll see, you know, uh, but I think that's a cheap shot, frankly. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't bother you, huh? No, no. <laughs> I think it's dumb. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's smile a bit. Um, this I came across a salon article by Annie Zaleski um, called uh, the title is uh, The Unrepentant Joy and Popularity of REM's Polarizing Shiny Happy People Song. Biel, do you like that song or no? I actually do. Yeah, so do I. Uh, the the article is a, uh, a you know it's it's a review of the uh, basically a, uh, I don't even know what to say. It's a it's about uh, out of time the REM's out of time album. It's the thirtieth anniversary and talks about the polarization. There are people who love shiny happy people and there are people who don't. I'm one of them. You're one of them who loves them. But <laughs> even more so is I love the video that was included in the article which I had not seen at the time, but REM apparently made, a, made a, an appearance on Sesame Street and redid the lyrics to Shiny Happy People to be called Furry Happy Monsters. <laughs> and so there's a, bunch of, there's a bunch of Muppets singing along to REM and REM singing along uh, with uh, changed lyrics of Furry Happy Monsters rather than Shiny Happy People. It's really good. I really love that idea. Uh, so um, speaking about TikTok, um, a Navajo Indian woman has gone viral on TikTok uh, as a skateboarder. Uh, her name is Naomi Glasses and she's from the Dinye tribe and uh, she uh, skateboards as a form she says of self-care and self-expression and a tool for exclusion and cultural diplomacy and community building which is a lot for skateboarding but uh, this is from a Teen Vogue article by Madeline Connors and um, when she skateboards, uh, Naomi Glasses wears native costumes, and she said when she started skateboarding, she thought she had to look like a boy, but she soon realized that she could look like herself, and uh, so she is campaigning to have skateboarding parks added to the uh, tribal nations because apparently there really aren't any, but uh, oh, her skateboarding videos are great and she sings and she, she just looks fabulous. I love her. <laughs> That's awesome. So, um, shiny objects. Yep. Yep. I got a quick one. Okay. This is a uh, very helpful. Uh, this is called lose the very. So, um, if you are, if you're feeling uncreative and you're trying to trying to write something and you keep using the word very, go to this site, losetheverry.com, and uh, it comes up with it combines very with a, a simple adjective and get you a more concise adjective. So um, rather than rather than using very, you put in the word that you want to want to use very with, and then it'll come up with a much better alternative for you. I like that. <laughs> like very, uh, very smart. If you were saying somebody was very smart, it might say brilliant, right? They'll come yeah. up with much better. Yep. <laughs> um, I, this is a, an app that, that was new to me. It's a YouTube autocomplete search app. It's a keyword research app that uses YouTube autocomplete. So how it works is you type in the um, the keyword that you want. And from A to Z, it shows you every possible example that occurs in the YouTube um, research. Um, it's just really, it, it was really helpful. You probably know it, right, Dave? I've used tools, not that one, but I've used tools like that with YouTube. Yeah. Pretty cool. So yep. I do have a pro tip. Um, and again, uh, I'm, on, I'm on TikTok this week. Um, there's a TikTok summit for small and medium businesses that is taking place on Wednesday, March 24th, 11 to 3 Eastern. And uh, the goal of it is to unlock TikTok's magic with creators, experts, and business owners while dispelling TikTok myths and um, helping businesses find the answers, the inspiration, and the confidence to get started on the platform. I'll be there. It's free, by the way. Yeah, good enough. 
let's wrap this up. Um, this is some daily weekly numbers of uh, online spending uh, is estimated to reach $1 trillion, $1 trillion by 2022. We could pay off, you know, the $1.9 trillion uh, uh, care COVID relief package in two years with that. <laughs> uh, this is from a Morning Brew article by uh, Haley uh, LeSavage, who reports on, uh, on Adobe Analytics is uh, put out, they put out a, an e-commerce um, report yearly. Uh, and it's reports that 20, 2020, 2022 will be the first trillion dollar year for e-com. Uh, online spending for the first two months of 2021 increased 34 34% year over year to 121 billion. And Adobe Analytics expects online sales this year to reach up to 930 billion. Curbside pickup increased 67% year over year last month. So uh, we are certainly changing our, our, our shopping habits in the wake of, uh, of COVID-19. And, uh, and that should, those habits should remain in some part at least um, when, we, when we get over this win. Um, yeah, I, I, I increasingly worry that stores are just going to go away, you know, other than grocery stores, uh, you know, there's, I mean, you can pretty much buy anything you need online. And why wouldn't you? Although when it's closed, which why would you buy clothes right now? But when it's close, <laughs> it, it's fun to go try them on with your friends. But anyway, that brings us to the end of episode 342 of the Beyond Social Media Show. And to find us, you just search Beyond Social Media Show. And I, we will have links to everything we discussed today. And uh, that will be at beyondsocialmediashow.com slash 342. And we hope you let us know what you think. Leave us a review. And... Um, please do subscribe to the podcast. And so I am here with David Erickson. He is on Twitter as D Erickson. He's on Instagram as D E Erickson. He's on YouTube as E Strategy, and he blogs at the fabulous E hyphen strategy blog.com. I'm BL Ackman. I'm on Twitter as What's Next. I blog at What's Next Blog. My YouTube channel is What's Next Blog. Uh, I have a website at blockman.com and on Instagram, more interesting than me is Lucy, the rescue puppy, uh, the beyond social media show website again, beyond social media show.com on Twitter. We're at BS media show. We hope when you go to the blog that you will sign up for our weekly newsletter and uh, please do subscribe to the podcast. You will find it Wherever you listen to your podcasts, we're on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, anywhere you're looking for a podcast, we'll be there. And we'll see.